Okay, good morning guys. Thanks again for taking the time to look at it. Part of where I get my information and where you get uh, your information is from the printed word, the newspaper, that archaic to some uh, method of conveying or deploying information. And what the important thing for me and why I take time to do this is not only to educate myself and you give you 100% of the information so that you can make uh, correct decisions, but also to strategize. In other words, spot, even the real estate profit is not a zero-sum game. Part of what we do is strategize so that my clients have an advantage over the other 48,000 realtors on the Toronto Real Estate Board and the other billion realtors in the galaxy. So, let's take a look. What's a dollar worth? This is markets, this is from the Wall Street Journal, and this is Friday, just before the weekend, November 10th. And part of what we are looking at here, now those of you who subscribe to my, to my, my client blog, of course, you get the specific information that I'm drilling down for. But this is of relevance to you because we are listing property international. That is, we are listing proper property internationally. I like the... The just uh, always think that I have to correct myself grammatically when half of you don't even care. <laughs> but anyway, um, and so it's it's incumbent upon us to know just what the value is uh, internationally, and this brings about a, an interesting point. It means that. If we're pegging it to the U.S. dollar, it means that property actually may fluctuate. I'm, I've listed property in St. Kitts and Nevis. We actually have some property listed in the United States of America. But it means that it's possibly we have to get, uh, get it around our heads that that price, the value, can fluctuate even though the price stays the same because the value of the dollar uh, moves as cor corresponds to the different the different uh, country that we're dealing with. And one of the things that we're going to look at is they call this here in terms of exchange XCD. Now, these are East Caribbean dollars. So I've listed some land around $850,000, land with a house on it. That's about uh, $850,000. That means it's about 400000 Canadian. So generally, uh, use that roughly to they tell you exactly what it is. It's 2.12. So one Canadian dollar is worth about $2.12 CC. Just something that you may use once I start pushing some of that information on the land in Nevis. And Nevis is a great place. I have the number of places that you can stay when you go to Nevis. They've just uh, instituted, uh, I think, an inaugural uh, cruise ships are now coming in. You ferried to and from the cruise ship because they don't have a deep water harbor. Take a look at it. Take a look at uh, different places to say. This one is a Hermitage Inn. Looks like a great place. Uh, you know, get your get your relaxation on, decompress, de-stress, or even if you want to get the freak on. I mean, this is a place as well, is it? Right up in the mountains. Just something that we're going to be looking at later on. But let us start out with some titillation. <laughs> Hear these guys in terms of real estate. And this, this stuff here just, just amazes me. First of all, we have reality TV, and I'd like to point out one of the shows on reality TV is called Million Dollar Listing. I don't know where they got that from. But Million Dollar Listing follows the, the path, the lives of a, a few real estate agents in New York, in LA, in Miami. I think they, they scrapped that one. I'm not sure why. But uh, it follows those lives. And in this case, so you have reality TV as reality TV. So you have reality TV, which is TV about real estate, but you have a reality show based on the agents and the lives, the, the conniving, the, uh, the inspiring uh, lives that these people lead. You also have Kim Kardashian. For those of you who don't know, I didn't know. You know, I'm not. I don't. I don't follow her. I got Kim on my Facebook. I don't know. We'll check that after. But Kim uh, has been known, among other things, for um, her, her her real estate savvy. 
And here we have in the, what is this, oh, Wall Street Journal again, just giving you an idea of the price of homes internationally, we have that uh, Kim Kardashian and Kanye West sell their Bel Air home for $17.8 million. Let me read to you what it says here. Reality star Kim Kardashian and her husband, musician Kanye West, have sold their Bel Air home for $17.8 million. $17.8 million for a house. Well, not really a house. This being reality TV, we can actually drill down and see what is going on. This is the house. Take a look at that. These guys don't mess. For those of you who might be myopic, Okay, enough of that. You're not going to buy that house. I'm not going to buy that house. This is just getting now to be voyeurism, which is what, which is a currency with which Kim deals. But $17.8 million. They tell me that that is actually, uh, uh, let's get rid of that. We're not going to use that anymore. That is, well, we're going to use this. That is, uh, was a, a record for that area at that time. So here we have a, an article about it. This makes huge news. So, and of course, as I said, one of the, uh, Josh Altman was one of the stars of, uh, of Million Dollar Listing, whatever it's called. But it says here the $17.8 million deal locked in the Altman, by the Altman brothers, is said by far the record for luxurious bell crests. So this is by far the record for sales. One of the things that they had to get specially made that Kim, Kim likes things large from what I understand, and these are specially made windows that they had to do. They had to get, how do you make windows? You throw them? No, those are, you throw pottery. But anyway, they had to get these windows, as you can say, spectacular windows, spectacular views. But, 17.8 million. In the meantime, former Hawaii hotel suite lists for 21.9 million dollars. At 21.9 million dollars, San Francisco Tudor side style mansion seeks 25 million. Now, in these cases here, the 21 million and the, well, 22 million, 25 million, they're asking for this. These guys got somebody turned came over. Uh, I think of a Ukrainian. A uh, star who is an aspiring, uh, an aspiring singer, and she happened to meet Kim in the house. Of course, when you have a house this big, you don't know who's in the house. So while she was doing a showing, and Kim showed her the closet, and it was love at first sight. Seventeen point eight million dollars. Get that around your mind when you're telling me that real estate in Toronto is priced too high. I take a look at this, uh, this uh, on the markets, your budget, etc. Just because what it does is compare the prices of things, services, goods, 2016, 2017. Remember that when I was uh, pleading with some of you to buy in Oshawa, it's not done in a vacuum. It's also done in context with uh, interest rates, etc. We'll flesh that out a bit more. And here. This is technology section, this is the Globe and Mail, and the duos, duo, that's two, these two people, virtual reality marketing is still in its infancy. I'm keeping a close watch on this, and the ones who are really leading the forefront on this technological charge are the uh, builders, the home builders, because they're able, instead of the usual kind of two-dimensional renderings, they're able now to give you a 3D three-dimensional rendering of what they propose. Now, I find that very interesting and extremely important to me as I move my business internationally so that people do not actually have to be in the property in order to view it. I think that, that, is, that that's one of the least important things in transacting an international deal. I know that because I have information here. You've seen me walk you through how we're able to sell a property on Islington Avenue in Toronto to a couple in Ireland. They never even saw the house. They just came over, 
they, before they came over, they just sent the money, did the contracts. We did it by email. Deal was done. Never saw the house. Um, what that tells me is that really the important thing in the transaction is a willing and able buyer. That's it. You have property for sale, uh, willing and able buyer. So let me just clarify for some of you how I work because there seems to be a puzzle to it. And this has to do when, especially when I look at the, the land that we have in Nevis. Nevis, of course, let's just tell you where Nevis is. Let's just Google Nevis, N-E-V-I-S, West Indies, as opposed to Nevis and other places in the globe. And you see here, let's get you some images. If you're looking at this map, Nevis is about halfway down through this arc here. Jamaica, Haiti, Puerto Rico, and St. Kitts, Nevis. So it's a state, it's a, the association of St. Kitts, Nevis, Two Island Federation. Anyway, Real estate property in Nevis. Now, Nevis, unlike, uh, unlike uh, Toronto, does not really have a Nevis real estate board. You may see things, multiple listing service. There's no, there is no uh, body that kind of governs real estate agents in Nevis. So part, uh, I got a proposal the other day where this agent is making me an offer. And here's the offer. They have property listed for sale and that property, it's listed with this agent in what's called an open listing. Open listings you may not have heard of before because I don't do open listings. Open listings are like open marriages. Yeah, we married, but you know, you can do anything that you want. I can do anything. Why even bother signing the paper? I don't do open listings. And the reason I don't do open listings is because my mom had a... Had a uh, I, don't, I just don't think right. My mom had a right uh, saying that she, how does it go? Those uh, matriarchal words of wisdom. It says that everybody's business is nobody's business. In other words, and the example, I remember to this day the example that she used. She said, look, if I leave here and said, okay, somebody make sure that the door is closed. That door will never get closed. <laughs> it may get closed by luck, but it won't get closed. Make sure that the door is locked. Everybody, make sure the door is locked, never get locked. However, if you say, Carl, make sure that the door is locked. It's your responsibility to make sure that the, lock, the door is locked. The door will get locked, as long as I have my ADD medication, in any case. <laughs> Didn't have any at that time. But the reference to that is this. I don't understand why people do that, because if you give your listing to everybody to sell, I mean, really, really, what incentive is there to sell it? Give it to me. I want the responsibility. I can take because my objective is of all of the 17, how many people do we have? The 7 billion people in the galaxy. I need to find one, 7 people in the world, the other people in the galaxy. Of the 17 billion people, 7 billion people on earth, I need to find one who is willing and able to purchase your property. I want the responsibility. I will do the marketing. I will find my con. I will open up my real, real uh, Rolodex, metaphorically, and find your buyer. If not, I don't want to be part of it. So the whole thing about, well, if you bring me an offer, I will give you 50%. You wouldn't be giving me 50%. Any offer that I bring to you or to you as a representative of your of your client will have my fee explicitly stated in the contract and it will have reference so that my fee is protected uh, under the laws of Ontario uh, because I'm not going to go litigate for someone um, uh, to pay me in the island of Nevis, the birthplace of my parents. That's just to put things out in the open just so that I don't have to say this a hundred times. In other words, if you listing land with me, you list with Carl Walwyn and Remax exclusively, and that's it. We will then take care of the other brokers that come in, 
and we will have a cooperation agreement with them. And the reason that you're listing it on the Toronto Real Estate Board instead of on some pretty website in Nevis, and there are some very compelling, very great, nice videos, everything. You drive around Nevis and tell me how many sold signs you see. Tell you what, send me a picture of 10 current sold signs in the island of Nevis that is still up and standing today. I'll send you $1,000 US. Just, sit, just 10. Nevis is a big island, well, you know, 12,000 people. Send me 10 soul signs. What that means is that places in Nevis are not selling, regardless of what I hear about in terms of, uh, well, you know, Carl, it's a high-end market. It's very exclusive. Uh, Trudeau came there. Trudeau came to the hotel. Uh, Lady Dad, they came to the hotel. Uh, Oprah Winfrey, they came to the hotel. They didn't buy any real estate in Nevis. I have people who are interested in Nevis or purchasing real estate deal directly with me. Deal with your agents. They will help us with it. But in terms of the deployment through the largest real estate board in the world and in a format which is is easily navigated and we have the uh, you show me a, uh, a city New York included that has that is as ethnically diverse and where people work together there's no other city heaven wasn't even like that they tried that in heaven they had to throw out a third of those people in heaven this is what uh, this is what I was told in the great book of antiquity so Toronto is different so you have a you have Indian, Asian, South Asian, Nordic, you have, you have the whole globe represented in Toronto. And the important thing about this is unlike some other boards, implicit in the listing agreement is the agreement that any other realtor on their website, specifically their website, they can offer that property for sale. So when you go to a realtor website, you can see property, you can see some of my properties. He doesn't have it listed, but it's deployed through the internet and through his website, and he has permission to offer it for sale. Extremely important. Moral to that long rant, give me the responsibility. You have a real estate in St. Kitts and St. Vincent in, in the Maritimes. You have real estate in Jamaica. You have real estate in, in the Dominican Republic. You have real estate in Martinique. Real estate that may be sitting there, not ravished, but certainly damaged by hurricanes. Real estate that was willed to you by your parents, you're never going to go back there to live. You're never going to go back and live in that house. You're never going to go and wake up in the night to use the outhouse washroom facilities. It's never going to happen. When you go down there, you want to stay at the Four Seasons. You want to stay at the Marriott. You want to stay at the Hyatt. I know this because you've told me so. You told me you don't want anything to do with that house. Why leave that real estate there languishing? Like it's bad for... Uh, the economy is bad for the look of the island, give it to me. Give me a price that you want and we'll shop it around the globe and see if there's anybody who's willing to pay for a little piece, a little slice of joy, a little slice of exclusive, exotic, stressful, sustainable living. I mean, how many places like that? And remember, heard it here first, even though you've heard it everywhere else as well, everybody in the world, including the skiers, they want safe, they want warm and sustainable. Any place that you have, safe, warm and sustainable is like that. Heaven's like that, safe, warm and sustainable. Anything you have like that is gonna go up in value. And trust me, it will. That's all for now, folks. It's time some of you get, don't be looking at this if you're driving, by the way. I know it's uh, FaceTime Live and all that. Do not be consulting your phones while you're driving. Wait until you get to your destination, work if some of you have it, and call me. Any questions? Stay with us if you can.